Well, howdy there, Internet people. It's Bo again. So today, we are going to talk about uh, Tucker Carlson's little theory. I know. I know. People are like, why do we have to talk about Tucker Carlson? Sadly, because he's influential. These theories that are pushed by these sorts of people, they end up in the mainstream. So we have to talk about them coming from them. Okay, so if you don't know what he said, he basically said the FBI orchestrated the events at the Capitol on the 6th. No joke. That, that was the whole spiel. Um, his evidence for this is that in some of the indictments there are unindicted co-conspirators. And therefore, that means that they're undercover agents. Let's just stop right here. That's not how that works. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not, no, that's not a thing. That's not how that works at all. Um, first, for a prosecutor to say, oh yeah, these, these federal agents here, we're going to put them in as co-conspirators. In fact, they're the ones who organized it. That would be what legal professionals would call a totally uncool move because that pretty much guarantees an acquittal on the grounds of entrapment. No, no lawyer is going to do that. They're not going to say, oh yeah, the feds actually incited and organized this whole thing. Even if it was true, they wouldn't say that. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, there's actually a rule saying they can't list undercovers as, uh, as uh, unindicted co-conspirators. It's just not how it works. Um, that isn't evidence that the FBI incited this. Now, it's not entirely impossible to suggest that the FBI would incite a crime, or at least those operating under their auspices. It has happened in the past. It didn't happen on the 6th, though. That's not a thing. Um, so, why, why do people get listed as unindicted co-conspirators? The mo one of the most common reasons is the person presenting to the grand jury, well, they believe this person was involved, person one or person two. They believe they were involved, but they don't have the evidence to indict them. So they don't name them. Because if they do name them, and that grand jury, that indictment gets released, the people named don't have a way to defend themselves because they're not charged. That's just slandering somebody's reputation. So they don't do that. that, that they don't name them. That's why you have unindicted co-conspirators. Another reason, which seems super likely in this case, because we know it's happening, is that uh, the unindicted co-conspirator is cooperating with federal authorities. That's, that's another reason that it happens. So the theory is, is, is garbage. Um, there's literally no evidence that has been presented to suggest this is true. None. The one piece of evidence, quote, that they are leaning on is not evidence. That's not how it works. It has, an, having unindicted co-conspirators co is not evidence of their being undercover agents, especially those that incited something. Um, but see, here's the thing. Why are they pushing these narratives? That's got to be the real question, right? Because if you think back, when it was happening, when it was actually going on, when there were people still there at the Capitol, you had a whole bunch of right-wing pundits and personalities. Oh, this is great. Look, Americans fighting for their freedom. And then they found out popular support wasn't there. It turned violent and failed. And all of a sudden, what occurred? Oh, it was, it was Black Lives Matter. It was Antifa's. It was the ghost of Hugo Chavez. It was literally anybody but them because they want to avoid accountability. And I'm not talking about the people who were present. These theories pushing the different groups that are responsible, anybody other than who is plainly responsible, they're all pushed by the pundits who pushed the baseless election fraud claims. They don't want to be held accountable by their viewers. In many ways, a lot of these media outlets that pushed these baseless theories about the election, they're responsible for what happened on the 6th. 
there's a direct line between putting this faulty information out there and what occurred. They probably didn't mean for that to happen. A lot of them may not even understand that the two things are related. You gotta remember, a lot of these people aren't very smart. But it's there. So now they have to find something else to blame it on. It wasn't the misinformation. It wasn't the constant incitement. It wasn't the right-wing talking heads. It wasn't the president. It was the FBI. The FBI tricked them. At least they're getting closer to the truth now. A lot of those people were tricked. They believed what they were told. I find it entertaining that in Tucker Carlson's little Scooby-Doo mystery here, they just refuse to take off the mask. Because when we pull off the mask, we know what happens at the end of every episode of Scooby-Doo. It's an old rich white guy that's ultimately responsible, right? It's probably going to be the case here. I think it's uh, funny that they're looking for uh, who to blame for inciting this when pretty much everybody knows who really incited it. Anyway, it's just a thought. Y'all have a good day.